Good evening, and welcome to the Norfolk Board of Selectmen's meeting of Tuesday, October 30th. Um, my name is Jim Lehan. To my right is my associate, Mr. Palumbo. To my left, my associate, Mr. Calcutt. To his left, Mr. Hathaway. Uh, is Sue Jacobson joining us? She's not. She is not. So Mr. Hathaway will be taking the minutes, I assume? I will. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to remind everybody that this meeting is being both audio and videotaped in compliance with the Massachusetts general law associated with the open meetings, and it can be viewed on both Verizon and Comcast cable. Uh, would you all please stand and join me for a Pledge of Allegiance? <coughs> I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, liberty, liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Hathaway, would you please read the agenda, sir? I would be happy to. Uh, the Norfolk Board of Selectmen meeting for Tuesday, October 30th, 2018, commencing at 7 p.m. First order of business, we have the Town Government Study Committee in. Second order of business, we have the Town Administrator Candidate Review Committee. A uh, number of action items, including appointing Chief Bushnell to the Town Administrator Candidate Review Committee. Uh, consider signing a separation agreement with the town administrator, consider approving the Board of Selectmen communication policy, uh, consider approving Garden Club of Norfolk annual plant and bake sale, consider, uh, I think we're gonna table this item, but please reconsider the Energy Committee warrant article. Uh, discussion items, potentially review the town meeting warrant. Uh, we have a report of the warrants, and then we have executive session to discuss the strategy session in preparation of potential litigation uh, with the electrical contractor related to the public safety project. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we have a, <laughs> this is like a, a I know, I was, was going to say something that wasn't appropriate, but this is, <laughs> a, <laughs> this is like a reunion. We've got three former selectmen in the audience this evening, so uh, thank you all for, and, and Anthony for mm -hmm. also. For, so we have four of the five designees so far willing to participate in what you and I know is a former charter committee, but I guess they now call it town study committee. I'm gonna make the assumption it's the same thing. Um, so welcome, have you all been sworn in? Okay, we are looking by the way for a couple of more volunteers to participate in this. Um, there is one, I believe Chris Cleverton, uh, who could not be with us this evening, but we'd like to get a couple more. So I'm just gonna turn it over to Mr. Hathaway just to share some of the parameters over what we're hoping you guys can dig yourselves into and wish you well. You guys have that already then, so. And okay. gentlemen, you guys <coughs> join in on any comments or thoughts you have on it as well? Mm -hmm. So I, what I've given to you is a very brief outline of, uh, that I put together for the Town Government Study Committee, and obviously I was planning on participating in this, but uh, due to agenda item number two, I will no longer be participating in this uh, committee. But uh, really the, you know, the thought process of the selectmen and I have talked about, um, and obviously with three former selectmen on board, you, you, you folks have a lot of history of the town um, um, as well. But we've gone through a process over the years, uh, periodically, of, of reviewing how we operate, how we're, how we're constructed, uh, how we process, uh, you know, anywhere from hiring processes to bill paying processes, um, how, uh, how we're constructed, meaning how our, all of our boards are, uh, whether they're appointed or elected, the size of them, um, certainly one of the, uh, items that came up at the last town meeting, whether or not we should have a recall provision. Um, those are all kind of things that uh, a town government study committee would typically look at. Um, so we're hoping to have uh, five to seven members. Um, I suspect that there will be a, a you know, this will probably be, this is a, this is a long term process, um, probably at least a year, more like two years. Um, I think there will be a lot of, you, you guys will come up with ideas of looking at different phases of the, or different components of our, of our local government. And uh, you'll probably have breakout groups that, that go and, you know, maybe study the land, one of the land use boards or go study uh, town hall on how we're constructed. Um, so I think there will be not only the whole committee working a lot, but, but there will certainly be a lot of breakout groups as well. And it's great to have people involved who have so much, uh, 
experience with not only our government, but uh, we have some folks that have other local government experience as well. Um, one of the rules that we had uh, that, that the selectmen agreed upon was that members of the committee shall not apply or be appointed to any position created as a result of the recommendations of the town government study committee. Um, I think that was a good good thing. Uh, I've seen it in other towns where a committee gets together and forms a town manager position and then the chairman of the committee applies for that job. So we, we were trying to just, uh, I think Kevin, Kevin suggested that one and it just made sense that uh, no, no self-fulfilling um, destinies here. I did put the uh, article in there and, it, and it's very broad uh, to see if the town will vote to create a town government study committee, which they did as appointed by the Board of Selectmen, which is, they've done so far, for the purpose of creating a town charter or take any other action relative thereto. So I think my preference, uh, not that I will be here, but my preference would be to create a town charter. That way, um, whether it's the finance department or, or whoever's sitting in my seat in the future, um, you know, there's a, there's a place to go to, to, to really, un, you know, and not have to dig through mass general laws and, and see, um, you know, and, and compare that to any home rule legislation we've had, um, you know, so that there's one, it just makes it more obvious and more transparent if there's one central location where you can go and understand how we, how we are meant to uh, operate. Um, to just the purpose, again, it's very broad, but the purpose of the town's government study committee is to study the operations and the structure of the town government including all applicable special acts and to recommend changes, if any, to the Board of Selectmen that would affect economics, increase efficiency, enhance service, or provide improved controls. The Board of Selectmen will then have the ability to move those recommendations forward to town meeting. Um, so again, very high level, you, you, the committee will have, to, you, you will be a, a public uh, committee, so you'll have to follow the rules of publicly posting and have 48 hours of notice and publicize your agenda, uh, have minutes recorded for uh, your meetings. Um, uh, and just follow all the rules. I don't know, uh, I'm sure I. Jeff, anything you wanna add? <clears throat> no, I mean, I, I think, you know, the fact that we've got the quality, the caliber of the people um, here in this room, a few other folks who have perspective you know, they, they've lived in the town, they've been involved in town government. Um, I think we're very fortunate and it's just uh, another example of the way people in this town have stepped up for the community and uh, I just wanted to express my appreciation. Okay. Nothing from mine. Thanks very much, everybody. I think if I could, I just had, you know, conversation with Rob today and, and we'd exchanged a couple emails previously. I mean, he, you know, he, his experience with this, it, I thought it was a great, you know, I'm sure other people are thinking the same thing, but you know, there's going to be public forums. There's going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of give and take. With you know, it's not just this committee coming up working in a vacuum. It's, it's this committee holding public forums and getting input from the citizens. And, um, you know, so it's it's clearly not a, a vacuum operation. Yeah, I, I thank you all for for doing this. And you know, wherever it goes, it goes. Um, I know Rob. I know a couple of the things that you're interested in looking at, and, and personally. Couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. Go on. Yes, you do. Uh, but no, I, we're thrilled that you, you, you're going to do this. And um, I, I remember last time the Charter Committee, they, uh, the three major recommendations that I remember, and there may have been more, but I remember the Finance Department and the Town Clerk and go to a five member board. Um, the one that was brought forward was the Finance Department, and, and that was a very wise decision. Uh, it, it has made a major or a significant impact on the way we do business and a very good decision. Um, I know some towns, for example, have planning boards with two appointed members and three elected members because I think sometimes what I know you guys understand because you've, you've been there, sometimes folks that don't participate in town government don't realize that these, in many respects, require a, a fairly professional level of knowledge. You know, and I mean, putting me on a conservation commission would be a significant problem. You know, it's just I have no expertise whatsoever in that field. And, and so you need folks that have that <coughs> skill set. And, Finding volunteers is hard, as we know. So some, sometimes when people are willing to be appointed, they feel a little differently about it than if they have to run, if you will, in the public forum, especially in this day and age. So um, I know you guys will look at all of that and look at other towns' best practices, and uh, if we can improve, let's improve. So 
we wish you we wish you well. You're on your own. I mean, organize yourselves as you see fit. Hold your meetings when you see fit. I'll just reemphasize what Jack said, which is you have. Well, of course, you've got Anthony there, so he'll hold you right to the queue. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, you know, the keeper of all that is right. Uh, but you know, you do have to follow the open meeting laws, and, and the more public forums you can have, the better. Um, so, thank you all. Any any questions you guys have? You all know as so much as we do. I did a bunch of research for Jack a while ago on this, so I have hard and soft copy of a lot of materials. Uh, so when you get yourself organized, let me know who, who wants it, and I'll get it to you. I think it's, some of it will save you some time. And It's actually kind of startling the number of communities that di have done town government study committees. So you go on Google and you find yes. 25, 30 things, and you know, very pre-written reports that will just be able to cross out, you know, Whitman and put in Norfolk exactly. where appropriate, or just kidding, we wouldn't do that. <laughs> so you're going to be quick. <laughs> it's going to be, you have to eat tomorrow. You'll have, you'll have it done by Friday. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of material out there, so yeah, there is. Let me know who wants it. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Or so? Thank you all very very. Oh, Jonathan. Uh, considering that the town meeting had a warrant article and some discussion about uh, recall provision, are you interested in us uh, going to that item first because it was something that was discussed at town meeting? Do you think there's an expectation of um, of this group to do that? I, I think that probably would be a good idea, actually, um, be, because I think there is an expectation that that would probably get a quicker review than perhaps some of the other items, which are more of the day-to-day -day operational considerations. So yeah, John, I think that makes sense. If you could bring back a recommendation by the Springtown meeting, I think that would be a good thing, personally. I mean, I, I've looked into that a little bit, too, and, and I've, I have talked to a number of people, towns that have it, and I've, I've seen some very worthwhile considerations associated that are well documented. I've seen some that are a total disaster. Uh, I've seen it used for the right reasons, and I've seen it used for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. So it, it, you know, as long as it's carefully worded so that it's not a tool for angry people, which, which it has been in many towns, um, it can be a good thing. You know, if you have someone that doesn't show up for a meeting for three years, <laughs> it would be nice to fill that position, you know, if the person refuses to resign. And we had that. We had that experience, as Mr. Whitmore, uh, Mr. Lindmark knows, uh, where we had someone that didn't show up for two years on the board and refused to resign. Um, so it's a vacant seat. It would be nice to fill that seat and, and have it productive. But I've also seen, if you look, I won't name the town, but in one town it absolutely created a, an enormous financial disaster for the community, literally put them in a huge deficit because of the chaos that it cr created. And it was a purely angry, vindictive process. That's what we want to avoid. And I, I think you would all agree with that. But So there are pros and cons. I think one of the justifications, and we've talked about it before, is um, Jim gave an example of the elected versus appointed. And that's where you might decide the group to recommend the recall provision, but having appointed as well as elected can still allow for some continuity. So there are some things that are related when you talk, you, you know, so I think we've we felt before, you know, this goes back a few months maybe, that this was the appropriate place to put that, that issue and open it up for discussion because there may be some relatedness, if you yeah. will. So. Good question, Jonathan. If, if you guys could make that happen, I think that probably would be a good thing. <coughs> a anything else? So there's a room reserved for you downstairs. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, you weren't. <laughs> so we'll thank, couple, thanks. Uh, before anything, there's a, there's a couple of appointments that are missing. Kevin, anything else? No, no nothing from mine. Jeff? Scott, you good? He needs to get sworn in. And then Scott, you know, have you been sworn in as a your ex officio who you Do I need to? I don't know. I'll find you it. Haven't, Scott hasn't been sworn in. No. Well, if you haven't been sworn in, you got the guy there to do it. Yeah, that's what I'm here for. <coughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. And good luck. All right, we have uh, about 15 minutes before the next group, so why don't we tackle some of the action items? Agreeable? Sure. Sure. Just came if you wanted to go right on and do the next one. Well, we don't have the other group here.
Yeah, you know the rest of the group. We don't have the rest of the group here, which is the reason we wanted Bernie here. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I missed something. Okay. Um, let me just start on the bottom. The uh, reconsideration of Energy Committee Warren article, which was to fund a, uh, I think it was, is it mm. 25 grand, 15 grand? I've forgotten the amount. It's 15. I 15 think, grand. Um, I, uh, I was asked to if we would be willing to reconsider having that done as we discussed for, for free, if you will. And our concern was that there was an entitlement to whatever work came out of that. Um, the folks that brought that forward feel that we should table that at this point in time, that, that they were a little premature and really hadn't thoroughly vented that consideration with the Energy Commission. So that they want to keep the Warren article as it now stands. So we'll just table that. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, are we okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. We, we put it on at their request. Uh, we'll withdraw it for now at their request. <laughs> um, we had hoped to appoint um, Peter Petrusik to the uh, Candidate Review Committee. Uh, Peter has uh, expressed a desire not to participate and has suggested that we appoint uh, Cole. Um, <clears throat> I would, what do you folks feel about that? Jeff? Yeah, I, I've made the point before that I do believe that it's important uh, for reasons of buy-in, if you will, um, that there be representation from, I'll say the rank and file, you know, whether it's a member of the force, in this case the firefighters, or if need be the chief. And I think what we're saying and what we're seeing is that the rank and file, they're on they're uncomfortable being in this position. So that being the case, um, perhaps by default, you, you know, it may need to be the chief so that there's some representation and participation. Um, so I, I just come back to that. And, um, you know, Kevin has brought up some concerns and I, and I acknowledge that there is a downside as well. It's, a, you know, but I mean, those are just my thoughts. Kevin? I'm Given the situation that we're in now, I mean, I've kind of expressed my concern with having direct reports be part of that process. Um, I think that we established that uh, we were kind of back into a corner in terms of having participation from a vital department or not. Um, given that situation, I feel that it would be appropriate in this case to have cold appointment. I agree with everything you said. <laughs> All right, do I have a motion to appoint uh, Chief Cole to the review committee? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. We still have a couple of minutes. Uh, let's see if we can knock a couple of these off. Um, well, if we go to a, do we have a, Jack, do we have a, I didn't see it in the email. Did we get a, uh, that's why I didn't see it. No. We just oh. maybe initial that top part so we can just get that out of the way tonight. Oh, okay. Uh, do we have a, a new draft of your agreement? Yeah, it should have been. Oh, it was. Did I not see it? Did I miss it? It should be in there. It wasn't in the. Like it wasn't in the. Oh, it was. It wasn't in the mail out that I got. Can you give us one second to take a quick glance at this? You said that there was two things that had changed. Would you mind highlighting those? Sure. Uh, the. Uh, Paragraph three, added on uh, the comma dated March 10th, 2015. So just added the date to that, uh, where it talks about the current employment contract. And then uh, in article four, same thing, added on the last three words. So that's at the bottom of page one. Uh, that it says during the sabbatical. Any other changes? Okay. Well, I had read through the document before and was comfortable with it. <coughs> Comments, guys? Mm -hmm. The, the um, Article 3, I, I guess that is assuming that, that that is the calendar equivalent of the 12 weeks. I'm making a logical statement, I guess, but that is the calendar equivalent, March 10th. 
March 10th is the is the date of the contract <coughs> that we're that it's referring to. That the uh, my current employment contract is dated March 10th of 2015. Is that what you're asking? No. I didn't think so. But <laughs> Twelve weeks represents December 1st to March 1st. March 10th is the end of the Oh, 12th. so you're, you're just merely referencing the date of the original contract. Correct. I see. All right. Yeah, that's 2015. I, I unfortunately was tying the 12 weeks to the March 10th date, and that they're not tied. They're not. Okay. Got it. Any other? I see what you're saying. Okay. Any other questions? No. Questions? Do I have a motion to approve and to sign? It was meant to add clarity, but. <laughs> Always is. I understood it before you made that change. Well, I hate to tell you who made that change. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Are we good? All right. Do a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sign away. <clears throat> Mr. Hathaway, you will be missed. I just need one copy, right? Let's do three. I wrote on this one. Oh, let's Here do two. On. Let's do two. <laughs> I see Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Scott, thanks for putting this together. Three. I think I, I don't remember signing three. Did I sign three? Not a good sign. Hmm? Two. I mean, that's enough, but What's that? Well, you actually, two is enough. Two? One for three? us, one for you should, should be okay. sufficient. Okay. Uh, we still got a few more minutes. Um, mm. Consider the BOS communication policy. Um, I'm, I had one consideration I sent in an email today. I didn't get a chance to go into the document and make that change, but I think the document is very well done. Uh, and if, at least conceptually, if there's an agreement that we provide the capability of a member of the board to respond to a question that does not require deliberation or debate or decisions by the board, like, you know, when's the next meeting or, you know, why is the road not <coughs> paved and we know the answer, we can answer, kind of similar to what you've done on Facebook, yep. that we're comfortable with that. Other than that, I think the document is very well done. Is that agreeable? Absolutely. So we'll tweak that language to allow for any of us to respond that does not require deliberation or debate by the board. So yeah. have a, oh, okay. I mean, yeah, I agree. It was well done, yeah. um, Kevin. I appreciate the Did you diligence. have any other thoughts on it? I think well, it's number three. The only thing I, I had, and it's, um, you know, it, 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 it's <laughs> not uh, a critical um, recommendation. It's, it's really supportive is that, you know, what we implement, we could do it as a, six month and see how it goes and then solicit feedback and do that type of review in six months um, it's just something to think about I, I don't feel that strongly about it but where it does change the dynamic for some people maybe some people more than others in terms of you know people that are you know, more inclined to well policy can be amended media. anytime right the policy can be but amended anytime it's, so it's just it's, an idea know, that you start with something almost like it's a it's a trial we're going to you know give it a shot um, and see if there's any unintend unintended consequences. But I don't feel that strongly about it. You've, you've done quite a bit of due diligence. So if we decide just to implement it and we can revisit it at any time, like Jim says, that's what yeah. we do. If, if we find that we need to make a change, we can make it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's good to have it in place. Yeah. So um, do I have a motion to approve with that caveat that we, uh, I just didn't get a chance to. To do it today and uh, so it's on me yeah I mean the scope of the policy was not to restrict it was to open yeah. up the line yeah. of communications yeah. more than anything else so. uh, very well done and well intended I, it was just that one part that I felt needed to be clarified right so yeah. so, okay. so, so moved second. second all in favor aye. aye thank you Kevin well done thank yep. you gentlemen uh, please consider approving Garden Club of Norfolk annual plant and bake sale on May 18th 2019 from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Town Hall Town Hill. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We still got a few minutes. Um, 
Let's what do you say we knock off these warrants? I move to approve the warrant as of October 23rd in the amount of $238,048.37. October 23rd in the amount of $124,348.99. October 12th in the amount of $816,861.10. In the amount, uh, excuse me, uh, September 28th in the amount of $815,249.12. In the uh, October 23rd in the amount of $4,266. October 12th in the amount of $817,776.10. Uh, those are all the ones that I signed and duly witnessed. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I move to accept the warrants dated 1016 in the amount of $556,292.87. On 1016 for $2,486.61, and on 928 in the amount of $816,164.12. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, well, you want to go get Mr. Kaliza? I don't know. Oh, perfect. <clears throat> Bernie, welcome. Thank you. Come on up. Nice to have you with us. Uh, having shared your travel schedule a couple of days ago with me, I'm surprised you're still here. Yeah. <laughs> or did you not Actually, leave? No, we did. We, I met. I made a great time coming up. I was in Coventry, oh Rhode God. Island and uh, at 5 o'clock, and uh, now I'm here, and then I'm off to uh, the town of Stoughton after this. Oh, good luck. So, uh, <laughs> this is a bit of a drive. And if I could squeeze one more in tonight, that would be great, but <laughs> I will have to do Communication policy related to uh, what's happening or what's new on the website by chance. Jeff. Thank you. Uh, welcome, Mike. I didn't think you were going to be able to make it. We're well. We're glad they did. Thank you. So can I interrupt for one second? Has anybody else not been sworn in, or did you all get sworn in, Michael? Oh, we get uh, Anthony. Uh, this is just the time He would be able to put the finalized yeah. communication policy up to the what's new portion of the website so it'll be communicated out. I will. I have, believe it or not, the only day I've had in about three weeks to have on my calendar. So I will tweet You'll find it. Hey, neighbor. Yeah. Just exactly. Perfect. I actually wrote it over a word document, but I didn't have time to read it. Did you get any, uh, uh, your kids, my kids now, you get kids out of school, out of college now. Backup, one, one, of, one of us will get there. <laughs> Years go by, don't they? All right, I was trying to get Anthony just to swear them in, but Anthony, I guess, Where was he? moving quicker than I. Did he go home? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Wow, I've never had anybody leave our meeting that soon. Okay, we good? Uh, well, first, thank you all. Uh, Chief, you're officially sworn into the committee. My sympathy. Condolences, whatever the right word was, but thank you all very much. Um, Susan, thank you for volunteering to participate. Uh, uh, thanks for, for doing it. Um, you, uh, now that we have formally signed the separation agreement with Mr. Hathaway and we've fired him, um, that's not true. We have not <laughs> fired him. Um, we, we have negotiated a, a uh, opportunity for him to move on with his life and for us to move on with our search. So it's a mutually agreeable opportunity. And now we turn it over to you folks. But I, I want to introduce Bernie, who is a, a consultant for us and will be working very closely with you uh, on this search. And I'm going to turn it over to you, sir. Well, great. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm pleased to be here and happy to be working with the town of Norfolk uh, in filling the, the big shoes that uh, need to be filled uh, here in the town administrative position. Uh, by way of background, uh, my, uh, my experience is in municipal government. I've worked in municipal government for uh, 
over 35 years now, actually, uh, working for or with municipalities. Um, it's most specifically, I was the town manager for the town of Chelmsford for almost 20 years and the uh, city manager for the city of Lowell for eight. So I have a good, uh, I think I have a good sense of the responsibilities of the position that you're seeking to fill uh, and a good sense of the, um, you know, the interests of uh, a board of selectmen in, in uh, filling this position. Uh, back in 2014, I started doing this consulting work, working with municipalities on a variety of projects, but uh, I have found that uh, over the last uh, three years, um, most of that effort in working with municipalities has been spent on helping them with recruitments. Uh, I, I think I was telling the chairman just the other day that in the last three years, uh, one-third of the communities in Massachusetts have turned over their town administrator or town manager positions. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of uh, competi there's a lot of c competition for communities to find people to fill these positions. So it's a it's a tough market right now. Uh, we've now completed uh, or in the process of com have completed or in the process of completing 25 recruitments uh, ourselves in the, those last uh, three years. Uh, in fact, we have a number of um, as you probably could tell by my schedule tonight, uh, we have a number of recruitments going on right now. Um, here in Massachusetts and a couple of others uh, outside of the state. So um, by way of um, just sort of explaining the process, I've been compiling some information on the town. Uh, I was here the other day to meet with uh, a number of the department heads, uh, had a chance to ch speak to the chairman. Um, uh, obviously, I spent some time with Jack and with Scott as well. Uh, if possible, I'd like to, over the course of the next few days, have a chance to talk to the other members of the board by phone. With the purpose being getting a feel and understanding of the type of person uh, you would like to fill this position, the skills, the attributes, uh, and um, I get a sense from you as to the uh, issues that you believe the town is facing because we want to make sure that the people that we're going out and recruiting or that we're getting to apply for this position uh, meet the requirements and the needs of the town of Norfolk. Um, I'm hoping that uh, we've got a draft profile done uh, for the town. Uh, we just need to fine-tune it to make sure we include all the relevant information. Um, not everyone's comments necessarily make it into writing. Uh, it's important that we just sort of keep things in the back of our head sometimes as to what type of uh, people we want to uh, apply for this position. I'd like to be able to advertise. Uh, I think I've provided uh, Scott with a, uh, when I submitted my proposal, um, a timetable that had us going into the market this week. I'd like to be able to stick with that um, because I know it's, uh, you're anxious to fill this position as quickly as possible. Um, so uh, if we begin advertising later this week, um, and certainly you didn't just bring me on to um, put an ad in the newspaper. Uh, you know, we're, going to, we're certainly going to advertise it, but uh, beyond that, uh, you know, we believe that uh, one of the value adds that we bring in is our network of managers throughout the Commonwealth, throughout the region that we can talk to, that we can spread the word that Norfolk is a job worth applying for. We want to get the best possible field for you. Um, our goal is probably to get you somewhere between 25 and 40 applicants for the position. Um, of those 25 to 40, uh, I anticipate that um, we'll probably be have 10 or so, 10 or 12, uh, that will be, meet the qualifications of the position and working with the um, search and screening committee uh, be able to narrow that field down to uh, seven or so uh, people that we could interview uh, with the hope being that we could then narrow that down further to the three people that we then pass on to the Board of Selectmen. Um, so my hope is that uh, if we can get out this week, we can have the um, applications in hand by the um, beginning of December, meet with the screening committee um, soon thereafter to go over the process that uh, we'll be using and to actually narrow that field down. Um, have uh, one or two days of interviewing um, uh, in executive session and then um, uh, some deliberations to make that decision. Uh, by way of the services that we pro provide to, to help you through this process is certainly the uh, development of the profile, the recruiting uh, that we do. Um, we serve as a resource for the candidates if they're looking for information about the town uh, and um, we, we will get that information for them so that we're getting the right fit of people, uh, and then we'll work with the screening committee to help them through the process of, uh, you know, asking the right questions and 
sometimes interpreting what the candidates say to the screening committee to make sure that uh, everyone understands what the candidates are saying and what the questions uh, are, that are being asked really mean uh, for the town so that the candidates, uh, again, have a full understanding. We do background checks, and we'll be working with Scott on uh, a good portion of that. Uh, and again, it's my hope that we can have uh, three candidates to you for an interview and a selection by the beginning of January. So that's the that's the the process in a nutshell, and I'd be happy to answer questions from anyone that might have some questions. No questions of mine. Thanks. Jeff. No, I mean we had worked uh, on the planner position. We did okay with that, right? Yeah, we did. We did. <laughs> Very was well. a good guy. So. Yeah. Okay. I figure. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. figure it must have worked out all right. If you. That, that's the good news. You're, also, you're, not also, here, the, you're also the guy to encourage Jack to play for Norwood, so we're all, we're one for one here. <laughs> that's Norwood. right. That's right. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. How about you folks? Yeah. Questions or comments or anything? This is the time. Yeah. I will say we try to make it as easy as possible for the uh, for the committee. Uh, we uh, you know, we we don't ask for. A, a lot of time we just ask that uh, we have be able to put together a schedule that works for everybody uh, and do it uh, with some flexibility so that uh, um, you know it can be done in a timely fashion so uh, we'll be in touch on that that would be yes. good no. uh, Mike Caliza 18 Creek um, welcome to Norfolk looking forward to working with you when um, will this group's first organizational meeting be held, and will it be with you uh, or separately? Do you know uh, that? I, I don't know that, absolutely. Um, uh, I will tell you that in many cases, again, I, I think that the work that the screening or search committee does is very important for the town, um, but it's, it's really more the quality of the meetings that, than the quantity. Uh, so in many cases, um, you know, we wouldn't have necessarily a need to meet um, until the applications come forward and we can discuss those at that meeting as well as uh, go over the criteria that the committee wants to use in evaluating the candidates. Uh, at that time we would also do our organizational work and um, um, uh, look at the, uh, the process that we're going to use to interview the candidates, the questions that we might want to ask. Um, we certainly um, can do a meeting in November uh, again, scheduling is always an issue uh, with the seven members of the committee and, and Scott, as well as myself, uh, to uh, put all that together. Uh, but uh, in, I guess in some communities we meet ahead of time, in other communities we don't meet until ap all the applications are in. But uh, I'm flexible on that. I just want to make one comment. My preference would be to meet ahead of time okay. and go over some ground rules. And sure. Yep. We'll what we'll do then is, uh, I think we're getting the email um, um, addresses for everyone. We'll probably do a doodle poll to see what uh, what times make sense. Uh, I will say that for me, um, nights are somewhat difficult. I understand it for everybody else. That might be the easiest time, uh, but essentially there are four nights in a week uh, that uh, and, um, we can sometimes. I can sometimes do two meetings a night. Uh, tonight I'm doing three, um, <coughs> but uh, you know, if we can work around those scheduling issues, I'd be happy to meet in November. Would so people be, if I could, would people be available to meet early in the morning? I can meet early morning, I can meet late afternoon, I can meet I, evening. Early okay. Good. Early's good? Okay. So maybe have a, a meeting one early morning and Susan, can you too? talk about that. I can't see Susan back there, so. <laughs> so I've, I've kind of promised to be Bernie's uh, feet on the ground here. So I've got your email addresses. One of the things I'll do over the next few days to, to get uh, your preferred uh, times, times that you're absolutely not available uh, and, and times that you are available in general. And then as we go specifically, that'll we'll, mm -hmm. we'll work that through. But. And once we complete the, uh, the profile, uh, which really lays out lays out the qualifications that we're looking for um, and the, um, the attributes and as well as the, some information about the town and the, the challenges and opportunities facing the town. We'll circulate that to the committee so that, because that sort of will lay out the, um, the criteria for how we want to make a selection, I would think. Chief, you had your, your hand up. 
Question answered? Yeah. Wow. For what it's worth, I always found the fourth candidate to the board of selectmen was the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good point. Uh, I, I just had one curious question. Um, I, I've been involved in a number of searches, and it was done two different ways. Are you going to provide this group in advance of that first meeting with all of the resumes, or are you going to give them all the resumes at that point in the meeting and then? I, I, I have no problem. I, I prefer giving it to them ahead of time. Okay. So I that would they can think see that them. would be better. And what I do is with the resumes that I receive, um, <coughs> I, I give them all. Some communities, they only want me to produce the ones that I think are worth looking at. Uh, I'm more than happy to give all of the resumes out. Uh, but I batch them into those that are qualified. That doesn't necessarily mean that they'd be the right candidates. It means they're qualified. Um, there are backstories to some candidates that I will bring to people's attention. Then there's the um, what I would refer to as the interesting candidates, those that may not meet the qualifications in the strictest sense, but bring something to the table that uh, might be worth looking at if you want to be out of the box. In, in the way you fill the position. And then the third batch of candidates will be those that simply aren't qualified. If the committee wants to pull out of that pile as well, uh, I've never seen that done, but uh, you'll find that there are candidates that aren't remotely qualified for this position. Um, but certainly the committee uh, uh, may be interested in seeing some of those interested candidates as well as the highly qualified. <coughs> Uh, the only thing I want to mention, too, is that this committee is subject to the open meeting law uh, of Massachusetts and for the public uh, records laws, so that we need to make sure that uh, we, we uh, are uh, following that and we hold ourselves accountable. So. And we, provide, we provide assistance in, in having that take place as well. Um, paramount is that the process be confidential uh, for the candidates that are applying so that uh, because many of them will be applying from positions that they currently have in the public sector. And um, sometimes um, boards of selectmen are not that happy when they find out that someone's applying elsewhere. So. Any other? Oh, Anthony's back. Did anybody else need to get sworn in? They do. We have a couple here that need to get sworn in. Yeah. Uh, any other questions, comments? On the board, Kevin? No, Jeff? Just thank you very much for your Jeff? time. Really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, it's, as you all know, you've been, most of you, if not all of you, have been around town. Well, you've all been around town government in some way or another. So you, you know the importance of, of this role to the town. Uh, a lot of people don't realize the amount of work that goes across that desk. Um, Jack's been with us 14 years uh, and finance director before that. And uh, uh, having had the privilege of working with him for 14 years, uh, I know how hard he has worked. I, I know it's impossible to satisfy everybody or please everyone or make every decision everybody wants, and uh, that just kind of goes with the job. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, we, we, he has a staff of two in his office, administrative assistants, and, and uh, has no assistant town administrator and has only his department heads, and that's a lot of work. And um, we're grateful for the 14 years we had with you. You'll get to say it again before you leave. Thank you. I appreciate but it. But your, your role is to find us another Jack. <laughs> uh, so we appreciate you all volunteering and um, look forward to what you bring forward. And Bernie, we're glad to have you on board. Oh, I, nice I know you're going to gonna help us a lot. We'll, so. we'll get, that's what we're here for. So thank you that. very much. Great. So thanks. Thank, thank you, you everyone. Thank you all thanks. very much. Good group. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, I'm glad you made it. Thank you. Get your running shoes on, Chief. Hey, Chief. No, I know you did. You are, we already know. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. No, you're fine. You're fine. You can send Marie if you want. Sure. Sure. That's fine. Anybody's welcome. <laughs> okay. Um, we have we do have an executive session. Before we get to that, a couple of, of just house cleaning things. Um, we've had a lot of 
uh, understandably, we've had questions from people what's going to happen when Jack leaves. So um, it's not something well, we need. Uh, how we're going to. Sorry, you had to. You, had to I, <laughs> you know, I, I, you want to switch seats? <laughs> no, I, I didn't. You know, I just. I just Touche. Thank, wait a minute here. As far back Stating as I can go. a point of fact. Uh, <laughs> some folks have asked, actually quite a few folks have asked, uh, you know, where do they go if, if um, they need some guidance or advice or whatever it might be uh, during December oh, right. January. Yeah. Yeah. So um, my thought was that, that we would look at our uh, liaison relationships. Mm -hmm. But I was going to suggest, if everyone's agreeable, uh, that the DPW, which is under me, I, that I would move that over on our Kevin. Um, and, and I know that you and Bob have, have built a relationship, yep. uh, and I think there's a comfort level there. Absolutely. Um, and you're available during the day. Yep. So is that agreeable with you? That's fine. So we'll, we'll make that change, if that's okay. Um, and I was going to meet with the department heads and anyone else in town hall that wanted to just talk about that. Mm -hmm. And just to say, you know, here's the list. We'll move you over to DPW. And uh, so in Decem December, if there are issues that you need counsel on, uh, as long as it isn't an issue that needs to be voted on or deliberated by the Board of Selectmen, we can deal with it. Mm -hmm. so, is that okay? Yeah, and good idea. I, I know you're tough on the days. I know it's tough for you to Some, be available, but there are days you are. Can, so, yeah, um, yeah. And, and by the way, it's not just employees, it's also boards. Mm -hmm. you know, boards have issues yeah, and questions right. and also that go to Jack, so um, we'll do our best to fill that gap if that's, right. everyone in agreement on that? Yeah. Okay, super. Um, Jack, do we have any other? Um, no, we, I mean, we have reviewed the town meeting warrant, although it hasn't changed. Um, the, we still have the, the pending issue of that last article that uh, Dave DeLuca was in today, and uh, he's working on it. Um, so I hope to have that early next week. Um, that's about the land from the state uh, that's around the... Mm -hmm. And it's a question of if it requires a warrant article or not? He thinks it does. So, he thinks so, it does, okay. So we've got a placeholder on there, so he's just going to... he's gonna firm up that article. I've asked him to also talk to DCAM, uh, their attorney, um, just to make sure that they're on the same page. Um, so he will do that. So I th there will be an, there will need to be an appropriation. Um, so they're selling us, selling us land for $400 an acre. So we're going to take five lands. So it's $2,000. There's also language in the legislation that says we're responsible for deed preparation and other. So I thought we'd, uh, I haven't talked to Todd about it yet, but I thought we'd we put aside, uh, I'm not sure what the right number is, but a few thousand dollars extra just in case there's a, some other money related to survey. I think the survey work is all done, um, but I, if there's deed preparation work that needs to get done, um, we'll have it's that a fair trade. money. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, talking to Sean and talking to uh, Ann, um, I think we're hoping to go back and, and get some more land. Um, around that as well. I think the land that we're getting will, will help, but uh, I think um, hopefully we'll be able to, to add on to that. And uh, now that we've had the Gale Associates field study work done and uh, we've got some, some better ideas, um, you know, I think if we add some more land in the future, that would be very helpful. For Walpole got, you know, 20 acres of much better land, so we're hoping to. It goes well with the 900,000 of prison mitigation funds. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, and it's you know, it's land that they're not. It, it, it'll help us a lot. It doesn't really hurt them to lose that land around our, our site. So, I think we're all in agreement. We'll take anything they'll give us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anything else, Jack? Um. No, we. Um, it's it's probably more of a, an executive session item, but we did have some uh, discussions today with CDR McGuire, and a whole room of attorneys um, talking about the trying to settle that separation with them um, you know there's two sides at least two sides to that they're they're they've they're suing myself and Matt Hafner along with Meta Comet for breaking that their contract as well as um, they're not suing the town of Norfolk but they're they're looking to get paid for some invoices that we're disputing um, the invoices that, that we're disputing um, Total of the invoices is fifty thousand um, dollars. The total on the Metacommon side is only seven thousand dollars. So why there's a lawsuit over there and not over there, I don't know. But uh, um, we made some progress today. I think we've we've narrowed, as Dave likes to say, we've narrowed that gap between what they're looking for and what we're 
we think we sh is a reasonable amount to pay. Um, but there will be there will have to be some more work done there. Um, you know, and then uh, you know Matt and I. I mean, again, really executive session, but I'll say it anyway. The uh, I mean, it's not. It is. It's a public record, so it's. Uh, you know, they they claim that we 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 harmed their contract between the between CDR and, and Metacommon um, by complaining about their project manager, um, their person in, on the field, and uh, I, we're, we're disputing that pretty pretty vigorously. So um, we didn't think he was performing his work, but that's that's within our right to to say that. So. We'll go. We'll keep moving forward on that. So the only other thing I have is uh, executive session for the potential litigation. So I, uh, I will entertain a motion to go into an executive session. Um, we have been notified by the electrical contractors group that is working on the public safety building that they are entering into litigation against the town and the general contractor and to discuss our strategy in open session would in fact be detrimental to the town's position. So do I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. All in favor? Roll call vote. Jeff Palumbo, aye. Jim Lehan, aye. Kevin Calpe, aye. We will not be returning to open session. There will be no mm -hmm. votes taken during executive session. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Um, most importantly, I hope everybody has a healthy and safe Halloween, uh, oh. that everyone remains safe. Uh, our next meeting will be on, uh, I believe, November 13th. I hope I have that right date. I didn't look at the calendar. Does that sound right? That does sound right. Okay. Uh, so, mm -hmm. oh, I, I, I apologize. I did. We did have one thing. We have a picture up on the wall. Oh. Totally forgot about that. We have four pictures. Um, if we can get the camera on that, and it, it's just more for informational, but um, uh, Mr. McGee gave several of us a tour of what's going on down at the uh, Lawrence Street Bridge. And I, I thought this particular picture would be of interest to people because now that it's all been uncovered, <clears throat> we've talked on several occasions about this whole area being reasonably unsafe. And uh, once they uncovered all of this and got down into the foundation, as you can see on, uh, I hope you can see, but towards the gravel side of that picture, the foundation of that bridge is all just field stones. And the concrete that you see on the far side of that picture is the reinforcement that Mr. McGee did to hold in those field stones several years ago, uh, but it was temporary at best. But as you can see here in the front, that is the foundation of that bridge. It's all field stone. And uh, that will all now get a whole new wall of concrete and be far more secure and safe than it has been. I and mean, the bridge was built in 1912. Uh, so uh, we didn't expect to find it. This is not a surprise to anybody. As the engineer said on site, he said, this is common when we see bridges this old. So. Kevin, I know you saw it as well. Any comments or thoughts? No, it was, it was quite eye-opening to see the, the lack of width for those supports that we saw on either side and how they were able to crumble away a little easier than one would suspect, but uh, eagerly looking forward to be resolved. Yeah. There was a picture of the sheet pile. Right. right. <coughs> the securing of the side on the causeway. Mm. They're, they're making very good progress. Um, so, so far, so good. But... Uh, for if there was any doubt as to the need of the work to being done there, um, I, I, <laughs> I could, at least speaking for me, I, I can see it, it, it's not a surprise. It, it, we're very fortunate to be able to fix this. So, okay. um, it was an interesting morning, wasn't it? Oh yes, yeah, yeah very much so. It was a very interesting morning. So, we just wanted to share that. So, thank you, Jack. So now we're going to now we're going to go into well, we have voted to go into executive session